All right, everyone, it is one o'clock, so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, thank you all so much for joining us today for our intramural sports uh, roundtable here at one o'clock on this Wednesday afternoon. Hope you all are staying safe with all of the crazy weather that we've been getting this week. Um, so just kind of starting off, uh, I want to go ahead and introduce our intramural sports committee. Um, so Grace and I have been serving as the chairs of uh, this committee, Grace and Graham from Emporia State. Uh, our members on the committee are Austin Sanderson from Wichita State. Mike Chady from UT Southwestern, A.O. Lawal from Prairie View A&M, Jake Walker from Sam Houston State University, Colin Andrick from Texas A&M University, Jamaica Cannon from Washington University, Dan Renholt from Washburn University, and Eric Vaughn from Truman State University. So this semester, we've been working to kind of uh, research and assess what's going on uh, in our intramural community in Region 4 um, and start looking to provide material to be able to help uh, advance our uh, intramural sports programs throughout our entire region. Uh, we're not only focusing on members this year, but also non-members and trying to get every university that we can within our region to get involved um, and provide resources uh, to everyone that we can based off of what we've heard. Uh, so with that being said, um, I'm going to turn it over to Jake Walker, who has been serving as the chair of our uh, subcommittee for research and assessment for uh, our survey for this semester, and he will go over a couple of our survey results. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, we had a really good turnout for our survey. We had over 50 different people that were able to fill out our survey, which gave us a lot of really good responses. Uh, for those people that did fill out the survey, really appreciate it. Uh, a lot of thanks out to you. And that's, we aren't able to gather all this information, obviously, without your help. Uh, so one of the purposes, we had three kind of main purposes of the survey once we kind of set out. Uh, a lot of it was based on different things that were happening within our society at this time. The first big thing is uh, COVID-19, uh, different schools reopening plans, how they're handling uh, participants as far as social distancing, wearing masks, what kind of cleaning procedures are they undertaking to ensure student safety. Uh, and what kind of phase plan, if any, do you have for reopening? We also were able to have a, a few schools that were submitted documentation that they have for a lot of that different things, and we'll make that available so that you can be you're able to see all those documents and be able to access that. I will also make available the raw data so that you're able to go back through the survey and check it out yourself. Uh, another one of the categories we looked at is gender inclusivity and diversity as a whole. Uh, so a lot of different schools have co-rec rules that range from something that's just gender restrictions to different gender restrictions, including different point differentials. And so we wanted to kind of get some more information about how school, different schools are handling that, as well as with diversity training, what schools were doing diversity training, who were they partnering with, what tools were they using? Uh, so we can develop resources that we can pass back out to the rest of the region for, make sure that we're all doing the best we possibly can in, in a lot of different areas. And lastly, staff engagement. I know me personally, this year staff engagement has been very tough. Uh, my staff was reduced uh, quite a bit. Our budget was reduced quite a bit. So what ways are we able to engage our staff and continue along our path towards student development that NERSA upholds uh, throughout this time when we're not doing as much as we normally would? So with that, uh, one of the first things we noticed when we got into this is a quick classification breakdown. Just kind of let everyone see where everyone's at. If it pulls up, it's going up. We'll make this available to everybody as well, but just off all the schools that filled out the survey, uh, here's kind of what we have in a breakdown of their different classifications. So if you have questions, I know me personally, my director asked me to look at other schools that are similar to us to find out different information. What are they doing? Uh, there. Okay, give me just one second. It's not pulling up properly. There we go. What other schools like me are doing and what can we be doing to make us more like the rest of, of the schools in our region? So we broke it down using enrollment numbers, participation numbers, and finally by states. A lot of different schools rely on what other schools in the state are doing. Some bigger schools rely on what other bigger schools are doing, so on and so forth. So this is a good tool that you can use to refer back to to kind of help you find some of these other schools that are in your similar categories. We also have contact information for some of these schools as well. So that if you have a question for one of them specifically, you're able to reach out to them directly as well. With the survey itself, one of the things we found most 
peculiar when we started this is that it was either when we broke it down by enrollment and by intramural participation and by your state is that there wasn't a lot of diversions from what we consider the norm. Most of the schools are doing kind of what everyone else is doing. I think this really speaks to what we do as a region, how well we communicated over the summer to prepare for the fall semester. Uh, there were still a few schools that had some questions, a few schools looking for some more information. Uh, but I think by the time they got around the survey, they were able to get that information. So that's really awesome. Uh, but as regards to what some of the things we found as far as common themes across this, uh, region four, most of the schools are using some sort of university or, or, or guidelines to determine when they're going to reopen or what they're going to use as far as development through their phase approach to reopening. This could include anything from the vice president to the president uh, to a director of rec sports, they include a lot of different characters. That's all dependent on the structure at that particular school. And most colleges are using some sort of phased approach to reopening their intramural program. Uh, this can be anything from, <clears throat> we're gonna try this and see how it works and then go from there. Or it can be, we're gonna open up with uh, a rec center with 30 max participants. And then maybe we wanna do uh, uh, reservations for different time slots or with different intramural programs. It's gonna start and do only online progress to individual dual participation sports and then progress to smaller or team-based sports. So a lot of different ways that varies. And I know we have a few documents on different schools, different phased approaches uh, that we were able to collect. Uh, we also have a lot of schools instituted uh, cleaning policies for COVID. Uh, schools were using a range of equipment wipes to disinfectant sprays to all, all different things between a lot of wide ranging things that are coming from that. <clears throat> But with that, a lot of these are, things are playing, staying in place. I know for Sam Houston specifically, is it's equipment cleaning. I think after flag football, for example, is not something that we normally we kind of take for granted. And going forward is you know, we'll make sure our equipment is clean before, during, and after uh, shifts going forward to make sure that we're still keeping our students as safe as possible. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of also rec centers switch to some kind of online orientation to in order to reach out to their student, participate, student participants and uh, how they're gonna enact, what their schedule is gonna be for the semester. And that was pretty uh, standard across the board as well. Uh, the most popular one that was used was Zoom. Some, some schools use Microsoft Teams, but most schools stuck with Zoom. Jumping into some other things with rule modifications. Most schools still use traditional correct modifications under NURSA, uh, especially for flag football. Uh, but some other schools do have open leagues with no gender restrictions. There's diff two different types of open leagues. There's an open league where it's usually the competitive league. Anybody can join that kind of goes for schools that either have allow students to play that are not in campus or allow some kind of combination of students to play in the most competitive division. Then you have co-rec, which is some schools only have gender restrictions. They don't have any bonuses for different gender scoring. With that, with genders, uh, most schools have or are planning to include gender inclusive policies in their intramural handbook going forward. Uh, most often, this was included as getting rid of single gender pronouns or pronouns or, or gender specific pronouns in their handbook. So instead of he, she, using they and them, it's all going along the lines of trying to make a more inclusive environment for everyone within the intramural program. Uh, a lot of schools reached out to their LGBTQ community in order to do this reached out to the risk management uh, and Title IX offices in order to make sure that these policies were as up-to-date as possible and as inclusive as possible. With diversity training, most schools actually went and either developed them, developed uh, their diversity training in-house or they partnered up with another campus or another department on campus. And this was really wide ranging and I don't think I saw any uh, you know, group of campuses that were doing it the exact same way. I did see, did see risk management. I did see diversity inclusion office. So a lot of different ways in which that can happen. Some schools were mandating that every student would go through some sort of diversity training. For some, it was only department specific. So definitely something to look at going forward. Uh, of the colleges that say they didn't have anything in place, they were planning on putting something in place. So if, you do need, if you're one of those schools and you want some more information on some of those resources those schools use, please feel free to reach out to anybody on our enroll subcommittee or anybody that we have uh, the contact information for, hopefully you'll be able to find some good resources to help you develop that. As far as engaging staff, most common thing I saw was cross-training. Uh, cross-training, cross-training. So whether it's intramural staff being cross-trained will help work in the facilities or help, or help out with fitness, that was the most common way that, that 
the professional staff were helping to engage their student staff members. Uh, with that, some of them did something very similar that I did to the creation of COVID shifts, whether they were called office work or they had to come in to do some training or prepare for training for next semester or next year. It was stuff that normally we would put off as professionals until a later date, but we were able to do now because there wasn't as much going on and that some of the schools were able to have, find the time and money in their budget to do so. As far as uh, staff safety, all staff is wearing masks. They have hand sanitization stations set up or they are, are they asking students to at least uh, keep their hands clean on a consistent basis, practicing social distancing and limiting or eliminating equipment sharing. That one did vary from campus to campus. Some eliminated it completely. Some were limiting the number of people that could share the equipment. Uh, some didn't allow equipment sharing at all. So that one did vary quite a bit from institution to institution. What we really found out through this whole process is that what everyone's doing in order to approach COVID is really specific to their campus. Uh, we've seen all across the country, no matter where you are, that COVID's hit certain places worse than others and some places it's hardly touched. And so really at the end of the day, it comes down to what your leadership staff says, how you as a group decide to move forward and what your information you're getting as far as feedback goes. There's really no clear cut answer, but I think from some of these things that we've seen, uh, we're all doing the best we can in order to approach this and handle this going forward. Quick uh, thank you to our sponsors for helping to put together the Region 4, uh, Region 4 conference. Also making sure it was free. That's always a, a bonus whenever they would make, make it free for, for our participants. Make sure you follow us on social media. We'll be putting out some information. Our communications committee does a great job with that, uh, highlighting different schools and different things that are going on around the region. And uh, thank you very much. It says communications committee, but we are the intramural committee. Uh, that was a quick breakdown of the survey. I would now like to open up for questions if anybody has any about the survey specifically. Not a question, but just something perspective wise, because you brought up the rule modifications for campus. Um, something we're working on on the National Editorial Board for Flag Football is a correct rule change and including basically language that um, at the very beginning, when it just talks about the general purpose of NURSA and flag football and the purpose it serves on campus and across the nation, uh, to be more inclusive. And um, then we even go further to say, basically later in the rule book, there's very broad terminology to say that doing anything or acting in a way that goes against this inclusivity clause is you know, not um, allowed, basically a penalty, um, but very close to full passing uh, a correct notification at this point is changing the scoring to be six points across the board. Um, it hasn't been fully like done in ink in the book yet, but it was something that including several institutions across region four, the input we got was that with the um, existing uh, rules to limit just guys throwing to guys, they seemed like a double whammy then to have restrictions and then also have different scoring. So the when we kind of changed to make some restrictions, but it's easier to open a play now, and now we're changing it to where the score is the same across the board. Um, and it, it, most of the people that spoke up on this is because of uh, inclusivity and equality and equitability. Um, so I would imagine that will pass. It has already passed the first round. Uh, so just something to keep in mind for those of you that do already have correct modifications on your own campus, uh, you may have been ahead of the trend. So good job. Really appreciate that, Tyler. Uh, when do you expect if that does go into place, when is the next uh, edition of the rule book expected to be released? Uh, the next edition will be in place for the 2021 season. So it'll be 21, 22. Uh, so next fall. Um, and our deadline for final edits to get it printed in time is late next month, early December. So like I said, it, at this point, the only thing that we really need to do is make sure that our language is good and they get it to uh, Human Kinetics, our publisher. Um, it already passed. So. Awesome, cool. Tyler, really appreciate the insight. Thank you very much. Awesome.
Awesome, cool. So uh, if no one else has any questions, uh, what we're gonna do is, Klee, if you can create, if Klee, were you able to create that poll? I'm not able to do one on my end. Uh, yeah, so um, for uh, the breakout sessions, I've put in um, the links in the chat, and then I'm also gonna share my screen really fast as well. Okay, so um, going into the next portion, we're gonna go into roundtable breakouts. Uh, so we're gonna give you about five minutes to get settled here into your breakout room. Uh, this first one is for if you are currently open and there are no restrictions, so you can do team sports, individual sports, how, whatever, um, you know, whatever you want, essentially, uh, this is the first link that you'll go to. Uh, the second link that you'll go to um, here is link for open, but you're minim you're uh, limited to smaller or uh, individual type of sports, um, dual sports, things like that. If you're uh, going to be, uh, if all you can do right now is online programming, then you'll stay at the same link. You won't go anywhere um, and you'll stay with us. And then if you are current, if your uh, building is currently closed, um, then you will go to the final link right here. Any questions about any of those kind of, if you're not sure where you would fall in those categories? And also, I will say, if you get into one of these uh, rooms and realize that um, you are in the you're in the wrong room, just come back really quick and then click on the link to go to the um, to the breakout room that you uh, would prefer going to. So if you kind of get lost and you're in the wrong spot, then you can always change. Hey, Cle, can you put the uh, the restricted link back in the chat because it's not showing up for me? Yes. So do we want to send everyone that way and start those rooms up at 120? Cleve, does that sound yep. good? Yep. Uh, everybody should be had that way, and then we'll start everything at 120. All right, hopefully everybody has gone where they need to be.
Clay? Yes. Which link did you put in for the all open? Uh, the Washburn link. Okay. Maybe I was in the wrong thing then before. Never mind. Thanks, Clee. No problem. What is going on to me? All right, so uh, hopefully everybody here is uh, here for the online intramural roundtable. Uh, if you are, uh, if you're still trying to get to a link and you don't have it, um, just go ahead and post it in the message. Um, and then uh, Eric, if, uh, if you would just repost those links, if there's somebody looking for another group. Um, so for this group, uh, Eric Vaughn and I are going to be leading this and uh, just kind of seeing where the state of each one of your programs are at. Um, so just kind of starting off here, uh, again, we want to thank our sponsors. And if you're not currently following uh, Region 4 on social media, uh, here are a couple of tags um, for you to go to. Uh, we're going to have another round of um, surveys that are going to come out. It's going to be a little bit shorter than this one that we had this last time to kind of reassess some things. Uh, so in order to get that material, make sure that you um, are signed up for these social media uh, platforms so that uh, you can get that information um, pretty quickly. So our question uh, first uh, to you all is, what are you doing to keep your student staff engaged and as well as your participants? Um, and anybody who'd like to speak up, just go ahead and unmute yourself and, and go ahead and, and share what you're doing. I'm not hearing anything so far. So Eric, do you want to share anything that you're doing at, uh, at Truman State? Yeah, sure. Um, so to keep our students engaged, what I'm doing here is I've created um, an extra position up here for a program assistant. And what's happening is any of my virtual events that I'm running. So we did a virtual uh, running league. We're currently doing a fantasy bachelorette league and uh, some other virtual events. And I pretty much put them in charge of those events. They're uh, the one that communicates with our participants, the one that uh, sets up a schedule, keeps the scoring and uh, the leaderboard up to date on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, we also are now starting to open up for like paddle, paddle sports, uh, badminton, and smaller sided things for open rec play during the day. And we have created court monitor positions for them to come in and just make sure that all of our policies and sanitation and cleaning gets done during that time. And then to answer any other questions that do come up. Fantastic. I know you mentioned, um, I know you mentioned kind of doing like a fancy bachelorette league and uh, also uh, kind of having some students working some office hours to kind of, you know, empower them and give them some, opportunities to run sports is, or is there anybody else that's doing some things like that hi guys Susan Lane long side college side affairs the community college outside of uh, Key State uh, area um I've been doing uh the NFL pick them challenge since the beginning of the NFL season so pick a, uh, a weekly winner and then we'll have over uh, a grand prize winner been doing things um some other kind of things like non-traditional intramural programming. So like a paint party, we've done a scavenger hunt, um, things of that nature, keep our students engaged. Um, some some uh, seminars or webinars on wellness, different wellness topics, um, things of that nature. And as far as keeping my student staff 
I only have one right now. I can only uh, go through work study. Um, so my other student is on pause. He, uh, the one that is working with me is um, helping with some office, you know, stuff and also planning uh, events. Emailing students, my club sports students who um, I need to get re uniforms returned, things of that nature. Fantastic. But the uh, NFL leagues have been really, really good um, for uh, a lot of people that I've talked to as well. Um, there's been a lot of like fancy football leagues and things like that that have been ran um, too. Uh, I know we have a intramural fancy football league that we have done and it's the first year that we tried something like that. And I think it's something that we're going to continue to do because it's been a really popular thing right now. So um, excellent stuff. Hey guys, can you hear me? All right, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I, uh, my microphones had some issues earlier on, but um, uh, your name's Justin with University of Houston downtown. Um, I agree, fantasy football has been, was the first time we're offering this fall. And as soon as I had it registration open on IM Leagues, it filled up in a day. So that was very popular. Um, based on the, uh, we've also done uh, traditional esports. FIFA has been the most popular sports. We do have an esports area in our university that is uh, hosted by student activities. So we kind of agreed that we'll do the sports games and then they'll do the other uh, shooting games and stuff like that. So uh, so th uh, those have been fun. Um, so one thing, one, one thing that's kind of taken off as well this fall is our uh, Strava app, uh, where we do virtual one mile and 5k uh, races, uh, challenges per se. So uh, we have a 50 plus group on our Strava app, uh, where people are joining and having fun, posting the results, interacting. So that's been fun to engage virtually and also host races during the week, uh, depending on the semester. So uh, that's something that even when we do open up, by the way, uh, our Student Life Center is currently closed due to the activity. It is actually open for ID services and that's it. But uh, as far as any sort of in-person activity, it is closed through January. So uh, we are still hosting online events, but I'm still looking for ideas for January when we do open up to a little bit more of modified events though. But um, just trying to survive and offer any ideas I can think of. So. Excellent. Is anybody offering, uh, so you mentioned your fantasy football league as well. Is anybody offering like a staff league or something like that where you're participating uh, with some of your uh, staff members and um, and things like that? Is there anything that you are doing for that? Ours is just students. Uh, UH Downtown only have about six staff members and not many of them are interested in. Uh, I, was, I, I was actually thinking about having a staff uh, university staff league for all departments, but that we'll see. We'll probably do that next year. But for us, it's just students. Um, here at Houston Community College, we didn't do staff. Um, we did, however, invite them to our virtual fitness classes. Um, we recently just did a rec talk where we talked about you know issues that are occurring within the sports industry, which allowed the faculty and staff to come and interact with our students. And then we recently started a, a NFL watch party where the students can actually come and interact with us uh, while we're watching Sunday football. I forgot to mention piggybacking on that. We had one was good, one was not so good. We had uh, Netflix watch parties, uh, Gridiron Game in the beginning of the fall that was actually uh, decently attended. And then we also had Miracle, uh, on, which is also on Netflix, but not many people attended that one, so. Excellent. These are awesome ideas, everyone. So uh, I think from here, we'll move on to our second question. Uh, Eric, what we got for question two? All right. So for question two, uh, what are you doing to keep student officials engaged? Uh, are you doing anything to continue their officiating education? Um, I can go ahead and start off just to open it up. Um, currently, right now, what we're doing is my um, interim supervisors, once basketball season rolls around, we're gonna go ahead and do a workshop here just to keep everybody um, you know, ready to go in case our school lets us do a three-on-three -three, um, league coming up in January. Um, and for doing anything to continue education, uh, the professional staff here has 
let our students go out and get uh, high school certifications uh, for any sport that we do here. So anything that correlates to football for flag football, baseball, softball, um, soccer and basketball. And then we'll go ahead and pay um, half, half of the fee. And if they do two sports, we'll pay a full fee for one of them. But right now, I think we have four students that are going to get certified for high school basketball here on the 12th of November, I believe. Um, I don't have any student reps, so student official. Hey guys, uh, Trevor Burnett, and in San Antonio. So we are actually doing, uh, we got to, we were approved to do some four on four flag football. So that was nice. Um, and then we do a bunch of rec day stuff. That's, I mean, it's little games that uh, pertain to the sports that we do, the major sports we do. So um, with flag footballs, obviously we got to do, um, I did it, I did it virtual, but um, we had some online training. And uh, so I did our typical online training and then uh, we did a lot of video watching videos and talking through plays and, and different scenarios. So um, that's what we're doing. So as far as three on three, that's all we've ever offered here. Uh, we don't have a facility. So um, yeah, we'll be doing three on three basketball in the fall or in the spring, I'm sorry. Awesome, is anybody else um, gonna be doing four on four? or a small sided game that is normally a five and five or seven on seven. Well, it hasn't, it hasn't been official, but I just still need to get confirmation with my director, but we're, we're looking to downsize our programming in the spring for five v five. Our most popular league is five on five basketball going into round three and then uh, seven v seven soccer, which we've been actually talking about for years, going down to four or five, whatever. Um, but just smaller capacity events because whenever we do open, we are going to be able to offer some activity, but when it needs to be modified. So those are some of the ideas that we're thinking about. And I actually, I actually had a question. Uh, for those, um, we currently are on a hiring freeze since like the summer, so we aren't able to hire really anybody new until we have openings, so which may not be until January. For those of you that have officials, I'm assuming they are currently hired. Uh, not uh, As far as this training that they're going through, are they getting paid for this training or are they waiting to get paid, I guess? So they get paid for us, they get paid, but we, we're, our hiring freeze only extends to pro staff. Um, we're allowed to hire student staff. But obviously, our we we're not hiring as many because we don't have our programming isn't as big or um, you know it's not as extensive as it typically would be on a normal fall semester. So we don't necessarily need that many. Um, currently, we do pay our students for training. Um, I've been in another university where um, they come to do an interest meeting, um, then we do interviews, and they get hired, and then they come to training, and they're not paid for that. And be just so if they feel like, you know, maybe officiating is not what they thought it was, then they go ahead and like go ahead and decide not to work and we don't have to worry about the payment. Uh, but we don't call it training at that time. We call it a workshop or a clinic because if we call it training, it, then it's constitutes that we have to pay them. So. All right, if we don't have anything else for that one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and chime in there. Sorry about that. I'm Frank Aldaz with uh, UT El Paso, UTEP down in El Paso, Texas and stuff. Uh, I came in the late and stuff, I apologize for that. Um, yeah, I, I heard a couple of you all mentioned regarding, um, I know we have a three on three schedule too, I think like, um, I, I think I believe Eric said, uh, coming up in the spring. Uh, so we've been, uh, we've done that, we've done that uh, training with MSL at that. And then we also, we also had a couple of, um, and then going back before, I guess I, I kind of lose track or I lose my train of thought regarding the paid training and so like that. Like we do both. There's some that we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll change the, I guess the, uh, the term and so like that uh, more into like a workshop as opposed to training, because like, I guess someone stated also, 
if you if you call it a training, then it's going to you're going to have to pay them for it. So we do both. Sometimes they do get paid training. And I don't know if I'm stating the obvious and stuff that, but they also get uh, when they officiate like uh, other events on uh, uh, from other departments on campus and so like that for other events and activities and so like that. Obviously, they get paid for those and stuff like that. Uh, but I imagine that's the way it is across the board. Um, um, and then, uh, yeah, we, we scheduled a bunch of, uh, I guess, a uh, low number kind of uh, events and activities through uh, through our intramurals, uh, uh, IM leagues and stuff like that. We had mainly uh, more individual type things like uh, we did a uh, soccer uh, pong. And so uh, we they we did train, we did have workshops for, for those events and stuff. The, a lot of my officials uh, weren't familiar with the, uh, with the soccer pong, because uh, there's there's different variations of soccer pong. Uh, that's what I came to find out. I always thought there was just the one and stuff like that. So we had to kind of distinguish between that and stuff. And then we also did like the horse. We did individual basketball horse uh, challenges and stuff like that. And then also kind of pent, uh, punt, passing, kick, kind of passing challenges and stuff like that. And so we did go through, uh, I guess, mini trainings, if you will, for those. Um, and that's basically where we're at and stuff like that, but uh, yeah, very limited in our operations. And then right now, uh, I don't know if you guys have heard, but here in El Paso, Texas, there's been like <laughs> mega spikes uh, in the COVID and so like that. So that's kind of right when we're getting, um, when I was kind of, I guess, receiving, uh, receiving more uh, positive feedback regarding beginning to start up and get uh, people to actually uh, maybe do, like I said, like, uh, uh, events in, in face, um, things and stuff like that, team wise and stuff like that is, uh, when we got the spikes and stuff. So that, that kind of set us back a little bit. Uh, so, yeah. So right now I, I think we're going to be kind of, kind of at a stalemate for, for a little bit and so like that, given the, the, the recent spikes here in this year and so like that. So I know the university is like, kind of like, um, yeah, they've, they've been, they've been holding us back. We've kind of tied our hands a little bit. Uh, and this recent spike doesn't help that matter. Thank you. Um, Clee, you want to go ahead with uh, question three? Yeah, so question three is, what programming have you implemented other than conventional video games? And we've discussed this a little bit in question one as well. Um, just a couple of more ideas that we've had at OSU just to kind of uh, – to kind of kick it off, um, we've done, we started a sports trivia program in person the past two years, and it's been at a local restaurant. And obviously with having to go online this year uh, and with COVID, that obviously was not a possibility. So we've kind of gone into like an online type of version of that. Um, and we've used YouTube and Kahoot to try and uh, be able to uh host those online sports trivia. So we did a sports trivia event this week that was, or this uh, semester that was virtual. And we also did like an online, just normal trivia event that was virtual as well. Um, and then another thing that we've kind of done uh, that has been pretty highly successful as well is we've done um, online, uh, uh, online board games. Um, and so we have uh, found a site that we can do um, online board games through like Settlers of Catan and things like that. Um, and that's been a pretty big hit for us um, as well. And then we've also been doing uh, online running for 5Ks and 10Ks um, and just basically having our participants track how far they have been able to, hurt, to run or, or walk each day and then send in that information to us. Um, and then the, the winner of you know, whoever's gone the farthest at the end of the semester um, gets a prize. And then we also do some raffle prizes for the people that participated as well. Um, we're doing a walkathon next month. Something different than just the virtual 5K and 10K runs. Um, it's also one of those things where staff can participate, faculty and staff can participate, but they won't win the grand prize um, of a Fitbit. That, that's basically what the students are getting. 
Um, another thing that we did was we did this minute to win it challenge where we, we did like an Oreo challenge and then we did a challenge where they had to transfer candy into one bowl into another within a minute. Um, so we tried those, those were more, here's a video, send us your video type thing. Um, besides videos, I, I would say the only other thing that we did differently was we did create like leagues instead of tournaments this time around to kind of make it seem more like an intramural league that they would kind of go through during the year. Um, it's been okay for the most part, but uh, other than, you know, like I said before, we did like a rec talk, the normal walks, our fitness classes. Um, that's pretty much what we've done, but and also trivia as well. They don't have anything to add additional to what's already been said. Um, I will say that everybody cross your fingers. I got approved to do an in-person turkey trot if I can social distance and stagger start times. That's next week. However, my vice president is getting very cautious about it because of the, the number spike. So that may end up going virtually. Um, so outside of that, I think everything, everybody said trivia, um, some workshops, um, like I said before, a paint party. And the paint parties has been really, really um, good for us. We have a vendor that will um, deliver the supplies to the students when they register, um, who could they pre-register, so they deliver the supplies to them either in person or in just leave it at their door or via mail. And then we get on Zoom and then the instructor teaches us how to, to go over the painting. That has been one of our most popular events. Um, so yeah. Hi everybody. Oh, <laughs> go, go ahead. <laughs> um, Southwestern University, Ana Castillo, um, things that we've been allowed to do for us, we do have tennis, pickleball, two on two, sand volleyball is what we've been allowed to do. We also did, um, we collaborated with student activities and did a human foosball. That was an event that I kind of borrowed from Ken Horton and, and Modified, we also have a YouTube channel, so we broadcasted that live and um, also had a um, half court shot contest as well. Student activities provided prize money, so we were able to do that uh, all physically distanced. And uh, also we are doing a semester long trek across Texas. So there's three um, different trails that you can follow for different mileage and it's for the semester and they can log their hours in through IM leagues. And um, we just do that for as a semester long thing for those that can physically distance and virtually do that. Hi everybody, this is Christy Caldwell from Texas State. The only things I was gonna add is due to a student request, we have added to our Strava competition of running walking, we added the cycling into that so we're also offering cycling competition and we also were challenged by the university to come up with some late night sunday night programs for the students and so while we have adjusted our hours till 10 p.m on sunday nights we're staying open until midnight and we're doing some games some of the play games that were mentioned um, like this upcoming sunday we're doing chubby bunny with the marshmallows we're doing plank competition um, push-up competition, and we're going to do rock, paper, scissor competition, everything that we can do social distance wise. And then we also, for tomorrow night, we're doing a Halloween themed event. And we have painting pumpkins happening that our intramural staff is doing. And that um, 50 person limit, and it filled up within um, a day and a half. So we're excited about that. We did one of those two here, back over here. Uh, Frank called us with a huge tip, and we did. We just didn't. Actually, we're still ongoing uh, this week and so that. But uh, our went our uh, pumpkin uh, carving, decorating contest and so like that went from a, from a, I guess like an indoor. Uh, I guess like you all saying physically distanced, socially distanced kind of event to uh, once the spike started happening here in COVID and so like that, then we moved it to an outdoor kind of drive-through. 
Uh, and then the weather, <laughs> just yesterday, the weather, climate changed drastically and so like that. Uh, we were in the 30s and stuff and uh, had a cold front go through here. And so they moved it indoor. And so now basically they're just kind of picking them up and students come in because uh, we're open at uh, the rec centers open at 25% capacity and stuff. And so uh, the few that are coming in to work out and stuff along with our student employees and so like that are is a way we're kind of getting rid of all uh, all the pumpkins we have, I think something like 300 pumpkins. Yeah, so we just kind of did a little bit that kind of changed throughout the, you know, as we just kind of had to make adjustments as, as, you know, throughout the last couple of weeks with that. And then we did, I think if, if I could add anything, it would be that we did, we did do a lot of uh, skills challenges. Uh, we did a soccer kind of a uh, trapping, uh, the most traps you could do uh, kind of thing. Um, we did that, and then we've also done. Uh, what's the other one? We did. We did another one, kind of a, a skills challenge uh, type of thing, where they would just kind of send in their uh, uh, their uh, their videos and stuff, uh, virtual, on, uh, and then we would uh, we would judge them uh, between the, the staff here at the with our department and stuff like that, and then uh, yeah, they could get prizes and stuff. So real quick for Halloween, we're going to do like a game night tomorrow. So we're going to do a costume contest and then we're going to do trivia, multiple choice, things of that nature. Um, we were going to show a movie, but we decided to do a game uh, game night. So we'll do a Jackbox game or something like that. Um, and over the summer, which was something that another thing that was popular for us was um, we did a sports movie bracket. So that was something that we did that went over pretty well. That sports movie bracket that that sounds really cool and so that is that uh, basically a bunch of sports movies and so like that uh, kind of uh, uh, judged and so like that and they kind of move on uh, you know they kind of advance uh, along a bracket type system or correct just like oh, okay. you would it, you know With a tournament yeah so they okay. the students vote on it and whichever movie one had the most votes in a certain time frame moved on that's, that's cool I like that how did you collect your votes. Um, I actually got a service that I don't remember the name of it because I only used it that one time. Uh, but and it ties into Facebook. Um, and I sent the link out. If I can find it real quick, I'll let you know. Um, as opposed to doing it through Instagram or anything like that. So I think it was. Oh, uh, I'll I'll let me get it. Find it. and I'll get back with you. Because we just did Please. our. Uh, good. Good. I was going to say, we just use Google form and we link the Google form to the link on the, on the bracket. And so they were able to automatically just enter it that way. Yeah, we, we just did the pick. same. Um, we did Google form, but we also uh, put ours on Instagram into the bracket that way and was able to get the data. Uh, Instagram, I don't know if you guys know, it, but it technically breaks it down. So you actually know exactly which person selected which team. Um, and then it tells you like overall, like how many people yeah. actually went to that particular store yeah. and selected. So Conference. it worked pretty well for us. Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, cool. uh, does anybody have anything else to add or are we okay to go to question four? All right. Uh, question four, what programming format are you using? Is it a week long events, tournaments, or are you actually running leagues? Mostly double elimination tournaments. We're doing like a combination of everything um, for our Rocket League and Super Smash Bros tournaments, we'll do double elimination. For FIFA, NBA 2K, Madden, we did a league. Um, for our walkathons and and things of that nature, they're usually about a week long. Um, and then our events are usually just uh, like one day, like the, the talks, the watch parties and things of that nature, the trivia nights once a month maybe. And yeah, that's basically what we're doing.
So our, our intramural sports feature both week-long events, day, uh, daily events, and also two week-long events. And back in April, we did a week-long FIFA tournament, which was actually re really well done. However, uh, talking to the students, they actually wanted to play more games. So we offered a two-week tournament where week one featured a uh, pool play where teams were divided into pools. So everyone was guaranteed about four, four to five games. And then following that, the next week, we had a single elimination tournament uh, playoff bracket. So that was fun. Our Strava one mile 5K challenges are Monday through Sunday throughout the week, given time to run their mile or 5K. Um, and then Super Smash Brothers, we, we didn't do that this fall, but we did it in the spring. Uh, that was a um, one day event, uh, with just more of a, a recreational tournament. And then uh, Mario Kart was a really cool feature where we offered uh, a weekly tournament that lasted for about four weeks on Tuesdays or whatever day of the week you chose. So uh, there's a feature on Mario Kart that was able to help us out with that. So, Were you able to run Mario Kart online? Yes. Uh, so Mario Kart was able to run online and it's very easy, for, very easy format to run online. Uh, someone has to have a Nintendo Switch to set up the tournament itself. But you basically put in all the settings, all the features from the from the beginning. Uh, you create the event, you give them the tournament code, and then they all know, they all know how to sign up. So um, again, you can make it daily. You can make it four weeks long on a specific date, specific time, and then each day that they race, they earn points by placing in how many races. And then at the end of four weeks, based on the Nintendo Switch standings. Uh, is the winner so it's really easy to run really fun that was one of the more, more, more popular events that we had compared to uh super smash brothers mario kart is actually easier to run online super smash brothers does has does have an online feature um you know people are used to playing online but super smash brothers is a little bit more trickier to run online because of the lag sometimes where it's a fast-paced game fighting different moves and stuff like that and if someone's internet is not as strong, then it takes a pretty big hit as far as the event. So we did struggle with that. But when it comes to Mario Kart, it was actually uh, really smooth online. Yeah, it's awesome. We actually ran uh, both of those events in person last year, and we did a little bit of research before the semester started. And uh, I wasn't sure that you could do Mario Kart online. So that, would, that is something we're probably going to implement in the spring. Yeah, definitely. It's yeah. Uh, I don't think we're going to be offering at least uh, Super Smash online. Uh, Super Smash is probably the best thing to do in person, because especially with one TV or one screen and multiple people going at it, it's it's a much. It calls for a much uh, much more fun event. All right, I'm not hearing anything else on question four, so we'll go to question five. Uh, so uh, this question is, how has moving to virtual only changed your marketing strategy? Um, and then also kind of on top of this is a secondary question as well. Um, how have you been able to manage uh, the students uh, who feel as though there should be in-person sports, but, but you're unable to offer them? Um, from a marketing standpoint, we did run into some issues, uh, given the fact that we had to do e-blasts in the sense. And um, unfortunately, when you have multiple departments and also things going on within the campus itself, uh, students wind up getting like maybe five or six emails per day. So we had to um, reduce our our events in regards to what we market out in regards to our e-blasts. Um, we also had to get approval for certain things um, when it comes to like certain flyers and things of that nature where a district has to be involved instead of like our own graphic design team. So that's been very difficult. Um, and then we also, we weren't able to really have like orientations with our students. So, we missed out on basically the entire fall class. Weren't really able to tell them about rec sports or anything of that nature. And uh, in regards to, we haven't had any students wanting things on campus. Uh, it's more of just them 
really wanting to know like when club sports is going to start back up, you know, if we're going to have it, things of that nature, but not necessarily coming on campus to participate in anything. Yeah, for, um, for, go, go ahead. ahead. Okay. Um, for, for us, um, we, we've always sent out a, a, a weekly email in, in connection with student life because I report up to student life. Um, so we've always sent out a, a weekly or a bi-weekly email regarding our uh, upcoming events. What we've done since going virtual has we've utilized social media a lot more. Prior to, to the pandemic and us, you know, going, working from home, we were, our departments weren't allowed to have a separate social media accounts. Um, our cl sport clubs could, but, and, uh, but our departments could not. Um, since, th since then, they agreed to allow us to have social media. So we've been using uh, social media a lot more and that seems to be uh, beneficial. Oh, in regards to what was the second part of the question? I'm sorry. Um, oh, like oh how students, you... are, come, students want to come on campus. We haven't really had a whole lot um, in regards to intramurals. I've had a couple of students who uh, our flag football team, you know, play flag football. Um, he came up and said, well, we would like when, are, you know, they ask questions or, or when, and I just explain, well, we haven't heard anything just yet, um, but I'm hoping to prepare, um, you know, plan a, provide a proposal, give a proposal and see if they will agree with some, some on campus activities. Um, so no real issues on that, in that regard. Um, yeah, we've definitely gone the way of social media. Uh, we also, the university had gotten a lot of feedback about, like everybody else said, a ton of emails going to students and students just not reading them because they get so many a day that they went with a uh, Truman Today email that went out once a week and there was just links that they could click on to go see the updates for different sections of the university. That way it's just one email and they can choose what they want to see. Um, and then also we created, or well, I guess I created a social media um, lead for each social media that we have. So I have somebody that's monitoring our Twitter, someone doing our Instagram, and then we had a Snapchat for a little bit because we were expecting to have in person sports for a while. Um, our social media ha following has picked up a lot. A lot more people are following our Twitter and our Instagram. Um, the content just isn't there as of now because we're just not doing much. Um, and with the students wanting to come back, it's uh, pretty bad. We have about eight to 10 emails a day where students want to come in and use the rec just to shoot around or use our multi-purpose gym for roller hockey. We even have a um, couple students renting out the local um, high school gym to go ahead and play pickup basketball from a certain time to certain time. So um, our students are wanting to get back in the gym as soon as possible. So it's been tough to be able to have to tell them no every single week, but we're working towards getting reopened and checking out some basketballs here probably in the next two weeks. I guess it should be said that um, myself and Nisha at HCC, we don't have facilities or so our indoor facility to have a tennis court and an outdoor basketball court. But, you know, it's a little different with regards to students wanting to come on campus and, you know, have access to those type of, that type of equipment and facility. Unless Justin wants to share that big old facility he got out over there. <laughs> yeah, for, yeah for, those you, uh, for those of you who don't know, UH Downtown is in the middle of getting a new facility built. Uh, they're finalizing the details and, we have a facility, uh, some of our competitors like the Tiffany and at North Side Fair and HCC and North Harris and all that may not have the facilities, but uh, we are uh, opening up a new facility in about a couple of years or so. I'm very excited about that. Um, waiting for pictures so I can show everyone on NERSA, but uh, I was actually gonna answer the question um, beyond the same ideas, social media, also people wanting to uh, unsubscribe from our mass emails. One of the platforms that we've actually been using that actually seems to be working is uh, Blackboard. Uh, one of our, our system director is also a, a faculty adjunct who has access to Blackboard. So uh, maybe not necessarily emailing them on Blackboard, but posting content in certain, what, and I don't know how, they, how she's doing it. Maybe she is emailing them, but using Blackboard because everyone's using Blackboard now for their classes and they're logging in, looking at their classes, but 
think that there's a way that they're putting up content on Blackboard so people can look at it or not. Uh, and that is getting people to join the uh, programming when it comes to sports or even fitness programs. So Blackboard is something that we've been used to not just use for marketing, but also communicate as well for clubs and organizations, stuff like that. Um, but overall, um, again, as I mentioned, we're not we're only open up for modified activity for only IDs. We're not currently open up for any sports. Uh, I think club sports are being patient. If I had a one club being in patience, probably our baseball team wanting to get back out there, um, you know, just reiterating to be patient, you know, what's going on with, you know, today's world and stuff like that. So, but overall, um, you know, no, luckily as of yet, no blowback. So. Um, before we leave, is anyone using texting to send out stuff to, to their students? Uh, I do. I am. Uh, we use I am leagues for our registration for intramural events, and that, that can obviously use for email, but you can also use it for texting as well, assuming they, they signed up with their phone number and carrier plan. So that's actually been very useful to get information quickly out there to people. But as far as group messages and text, not only, you know, if we have stuff going on, but I am leagues is the only form of texting I've been using. Um, I do text my students uh, like in the beginning, we have like uh, IM chairs who are in charge of all the organizationals, um, IM teams and things like that. And so I have a captain and chair meeting. And if they want to share their number with me, they go ahead and do it. And that's an easy way for me to reach out and let them know like their game has been canceled or forfeited or something like that. Or just the communication of, hey, I, we're not able to make our game today. What time can we make it up? Um, the students seem to like that a lot better than emails because obviously they have their phone on them at all times. And they're always texting anyways. So... Other than that, yeah, that's pretty much what I do. Um, we haven't used it used this in a while, but um, we started a group me. So like if students wanted to join our group me to be included in or be informed about events. So that may be something to look into if they've already participated. Say, hey, you know, we created a group me, you know, to stay in touch, get more information, you know, join this, this group. Yeah, we've um, we've uh, done both, and so that we I, I do have my uh, as far as texting goes, I do have the, that is one of the uh, the I guess the things that I assigned my uh, my intramural uh, staff is that uh, they basically I guess working intramurals in the past and stuff like that uh, you usually have some of the, the usual suspects and stuff that join the the, the same sports and stuff like that. And so I did have them reach out to them. They have kind, they are kind of, uh, I guess, staying in touch and communicating with them via text and stuff like like most students do. Um, as far as like upcoming events and you know possible events and that sort of thing. Um, and then uh, yeah, we also do the IM leagues a lot. We've used that to, uh, to do to send out announcements and uh, messages and stuff like that too. Awesome. So uh, before we go, we have about six or seven minutes left on the call. I want to open the floor up to any other burning questions that anybody has. Has anyone gotten approval for um, going like being able to lift some things in the spring and be able to work uh, uh, work in some team sports or at least individual and dual sports. Not yet, but I'm going to include. Uh, we have to. Um, I have to have my calendar. We're going to go over our calendar of events with my director next week. So that's going to be. I'm going to include that information. I mean, those opportunities. I'm just hoping that they'll approve it. We've we've been approved since uh, like week three of the semester to do flag football. We also did volleyball. We did uh, six on six, and then table tennis, and which we did singles for table tennis and pool. But um, we did some eight ball for table tennis.
So we've been approved for softball in the spring. Um, well, it's it's still in the works, actually. It's not 100% approved yet, but it's uh, it sounds like we're going to get approved for softball uh, in the spring. Um, we just have to put in a pretty significant plan on like how we're going to be able to manage all of our participants and make sure everybody's staying safe. Um, and then outside of that, we're probably going to do some – singles and dual sports and stuff like that, 2v2 volleyball um, and stuff like that. Um, actually, our calendar is also going to get approved here in the next couple of weeks, my director. Um, but we are looking to do an outdoor five on five basketball league coming maybe late April, try to like end with a bang. We are getting a new uh, blacktop basketball court put together. Uh, it's going to be fenced in with some lights. So we're hoping that that's going to work. Uh, we're going to try to run a four and four volleyball league inside um, because six on six, I guess they are just not wanting to be a full team sport like normal and three on three basketball inside, like we said before. Um, for some reason, soccer is one of the only sports that are getting holed up. Uh, they don't want us playing indoor soccer. They said it's too confined space. So other than that, yeah, that's what our calendar is going to look like for actual team sports. All right. So that is all the time that we are going to have for today. They're about to start the next session up here. Thank you all so much for joining us today and sharing what's going on in your programs. Uh, really enjoyed hearing all the input that we had. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put in, uh, before um, I hop off here, I'm going to put in our uh, emails um, so that if you would like to contact us about anything, um, please do. Uh, you can also uh, find our emails on um, the website as well uh, at the Region 4 website. Uh, and feel free to, uh, to contact us or any of our um, members from uh, the Intramural Sports Committee so that we can help with anything that you need. Appreciate it. Thanks. You guys stay safe. Thanks, uh, Jason, guys. Jason, just, just to answer your question, I don't think anybody um, that was on the call was doing any actual flag on football or basketball. I think some people did some volleyball two on two. Um, but other than that, I, I don't think we heard anybody saying they're doing uh, full team sports day weekly. No, there wasn't anything like that. Um, I guess probably softball was the closest to an actual team sport happening. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. well, I hope you beat that challenge and I hope you do well. <laughs> Let us know how it goes. Yes, please do. <laughs> Bye, Jason. See y'all.